Okay. So I do want to record this for those who can't make it this evening. Um, but I do want to leave it uh, with the capability for you to all unmute yourselves in case uh, you have any questions or anything like that. Only thing I ask is, you know, I do uh, wish for everybody to be respectful and all that. Um, but first off, thank you, Zach. Zach Storms, he's the one who put this all together for his team. Um, and everything. So appreciate you, bro. He asked me the uh, last week, I think it was, if we could do a training. Yeah. And uh, man, like I've been, I've been amped about this all week, bro. So uh, appreciate you throwing this, uh, throwing this down for us here, throwing this down for the fam. Um. So I guess what is uh. Some of the, I have a few things in mind, but what is it, uh, I guess, that you were hoping for me to go over um, and stuff, just to make sure I nail everything? Pretty much just to see, like, how you mark up your charts and everything, like, prior to actually calling them out when you're live and everything. Okay. Kind of get, like, a... Just kind of like a chart training? Yeah, kind of just, like, an explanation of, or like, a detailed like thing of how you go out over everything before you call it out yeah for sure because i mean i um, watched your youtube video too i just watched that last night actually uh like with the bullish and bearish candles with like you're looking for those towards the uptrend or like downtrend of everything but mm -hmm. i don't know like if there's anything else just go over that too yeah absolutely <laughs> Um, a big one that I do want to touch on, um, cause I've been asked about this a lot lately is emotional and mental discipline. I think that that is a huge, huge part to trading that, um, you know, a lot of people are currently kind of, uh, struggling with or currently trying to get better at. I know that, um, mark up some trends. Oh, okay. Um, you know, I know that that is somewhat overlooked a lot, but that truly is, you know, 50%, if not a lot, lot more. I mean, you, a lot of us, you know, we know how to mark up charts. You know, you go through the academy, you know how to mark up, you know, your support, your resistance, things like that. Where I find most of my traders struggle is um, it comes down to emotional discipline or mental, mental discipline and stuff. And so I did get asked this yesterday, how do I practice it? Or what are some things that um, I can do to get better at my emotional discipline or emotion, managing my emotions? And, um, you know, the way to practice it is apply it to your whole life. So the word non-judgment, if I could put it into one word, it'd be non-judgment. So you don't want to become so attached to, I mean, really anything. I mean, if you let anything kind of manipulate how you're feeling or anything like that. Like, you know, you're giving that control over your, over your own mind. You're giving that control over yourself. So um, a good way to kind of practice non-judgment is to uh, figure out where or why you're feeling emotions. So when you take an L, like when you lose a trade, like what is it that you are feeling and what is the derivative derivative of that feeling? So um you know, for example, like a really general one, like outside of trading, a really general one would be like, you know, we know that killing is wrong, right? Everybody would say killing is wrong. We judge the, the term killing with it being wrong. However, would it really be wrong for a lion to kill a gazelle? Right? It kind of shifts our standpoint on it. And so it kind of that's kind of how everything in life is though. That's how everything and that applies to trading immensely. So, um, you know, when you're able to attack everything from non-judgment, you're able to really get a great viewpoint or a great understanding. And you're able to think a lot more logically about what's going on in the markets, what's happening in the markets, everything like that. So you don't have to, um, react. And so, most people they react poorly. I know for me, like I react poorly. Uh, you know, when I when I was early on, like I'm. Just, I mean, it's something that you always are gonna work on. Like I still work on it, but earlier on, like when I get frustrated, like it was just like, uh, you know, I'm I related it to just like not having very much money. You know, it's like if I lost a trade, it's like you know I'd think you know maybe not consciously, but it kind of just you know, triggers that. Um, 
you know, that uh, feeling that you get, like, when you lose, like, let's say, like, you lose um, at a blackjack table, or, like, let's say, like, your parents had a uh, really big investment that went south, or something like that, and so when you lose money, you're subconsciously kind of relating it to something else that happens in your life, and that is what is triggering the emotion, but if you can become aware of what that is, and you can really dial in on uh, just your own personal awareness, then you're going to be able to, you know, feel it, but then manage it much, much better. And that's going to help you think a lot more clearly about, uh, you know, what the trades that you're taking and why you're taking trades. And it's going to prevent you from trading emotionally, because I know that that's, I mean, that's how I've in the past definitely hurt myself, you know, and I think that that's like what a lot of people do. I don't ever hear, and I personally have not, I don't ever hear of somebody losing um, their entire account or blowing their entire account little by little by little. I feel like it's always in a large sum that people do it, tend to do it. So um, when you're able to really, when you're able to really kind of think a lot more logically, think for the long term, all of that, you're going to do yourself a great favor in managing your emotions. So like for me, truthfully, like if I'm going to be honest, how many people are on here? I know a lot of other people are going to watch this, but like for me, honestly, like I don't really get excited anymore when I, when I win a trade and it's just because you stay neutral. So it's like people swing one way and then they swing the other way. And so when you're staying neutral and you stay in that zone of like non-judgment, then you're, you're just more collected. You're able to really um, gather things for what they are and you're not really, you know, obviously emotionally reacting to anything. But what hypes me up on the calls is just trading with everybody. I just like to be, you know, with the crew that we have and everything like that. Like that gets me excited. It's not necessarily winning the trade that really excites me anymore. Um, but I guess uh, that's kind of what I have for the most part on like kind of, managing emotions, stuff like that. Um, it's just kind of, you know, a lot of, a lot of people think that they can come into trading and they can just be the person that they currently are and that they're going to go and smack through, you know, milestones that like Matt has hit. So, um, you know, there is a lot of personal development, a lot of work that you do have to do in yourself in order to really, uh, become a great trader. And that's not a bad thing. That's going to help you in all, aspects of your life and that's something that's really really great about what we do and that's something that's really great about this company so uh without any further ado though i will share my screen here i'll bring up some charts and oops i do not need that um, i'll bring up some charts and we will go over um from start to finish how i like to look for a trade setup Got to log into Trading View here. Apparently, what's going on? Oh, geez. All right. Okay. So, what do I got here? Let's start on EuroCAD here. We'll completely clear this out. Um, this, I, if you trade with me, you know I absolutely love this pair. This is the pair that I've made a majority of the, the money that I've made on. Now, here's a quick tip for a lot of people who are new. Or if you're new, then my recommendation and Ness has preached this from when I was, when I was new and I tuned in with him, he says to focus on one pair, focus on one per currency pair. It doesn't matter what currency pair it is. Just focus on one pair and dial in on that pair. Um, <clears throat> if you follow a certain educator, or you follow, um, you know, whoever it is and you know you see that they like to trade a certain pair like matt loves uj we all know like matt matt i think hit you know his first few hundred thousand dollars purely off uj he's made most of his money on uj so focus on one pair 
if you have like a mentor like that, then focus on, you know, the pair that they focus on, because then when you're learning from them, you're able to correlate it over to them a lot easier, but focus on one pair. And seriously, like when I first started, um, really dialing in on, on my craft, I literally would go out to the weekly chart and from start to finish, I marked out every single support resistance and trend line on the weekly chart all the way through down to the five minute chart and i mean that i mean it took a while and the chart looked super super overwhelming but it just kind of gave you it teaches your mind on you know the personality of that pair i mean you really really do want to um uh you really do want to you know, hone in and learn the personality of a pair. It's just like when you first start dating a person, Truth, truthfully, um, you know, you, you go out to, you go out to eat a few times and you get to know that person, right? So it's exactly the same thing. Like you want to uh, get to know the personality, get to know how it acts, get to know how it um, reacts during certain times of day or towards news, things like that. So Dial it out all the way to the weekly, then the daily, four hour, one hour, 15, five. Find uh, those support resistance trend lines, find what works for you. And then, um, you know, just, can, just hammer down on it. Just continuously learn that pair. Um, and, you know, unless you're trading uh, with somebody else and you're kind of taking uh, somebody else's analysis, then only trade that pair when you're trading on your own. It's okay to, to um, wait for setups. I know a lot of, a lot of us want to just get kind of get in and out with the bag uh, quickly. And we only want to be on the charts for like 15, 20 minutes. But if you learn one pair, that's going to immensely help your, help your trading game. Um, so when I go in to mark up my charts, since I take five minute trades, we all, we all take, you know, three to five minute trades roughly, I would assume. Uh, I only go out to the hourly chart. Uh, that just tends to be kind of what works for me. And I'll mark out in horizontal lines, you know, my support, my resistance, my trend lines, all of that. So I can see like right, out, right away, those are kind of where I see rejection. I see rejection there. Um, I'll mark that out too, just cause we did get a wick up there. And we got that. And I'll mark out all of them, right? And then I'll mark out my trend lines as well. Um, a lot of people like to do three points of contact. Some people do two points of contact. I'd say two points of contact is a very, very minimum um, for a trend line. A lot of people like to do wicks, wicks to wicks. A lot of people do body to body. Uh, I kind of do a variation. I try to get body to body. If I can even grab this again here, I try to go body to body. Um, I'm not super upset if you know the one hits the wick there. So that's how I mark my trend lines. Um, I'll mark out. I like to try to find an uptrend and a downtrend because there's always going to be trends within trends. So you can see the primary trend of this is down, and now you can see that it's on an uptrend here. So this is kind of saying like, all right, if we're going to respect this downtrend, if this downtrend is really the move, then this uptrend may be what gets it there. But we've also got a lot of, you know, a lot of resistance here to crack through before it does. So it may come down again and then come back up to that trend line at a later time. We don't necessarily know, but it kind of gives us a good gauge as to what's going on overall in the market. All right. Um, so I'm going to move that up just to kind of, now I'm getting a little OCD. I wanted to touch that wick. There we go. Um, and then what I like to do after the one hour, I will go into the 15 minute and I'll do the same thing, but I'll do it with rays. So I'll mark it up uh, with the horizontal rays. So I can see like one in here. Um, see that this one here right I'll 
take that one. Um, we'll take this one here. All right. So we've got some points of contact here, right? Um, you know what, actually, I will, since we are on an uptrend here, I'll even mark that one in there, just to see. All right, maybe I'll make this a different color just because I know that this one's a weak, sort of weaker, uh, oh gosh, that's hard for my eyes. Sort of a weaker um, support, all right? But it's a more recent one. So that's what I'll do. I like to color code them. Um, a lot of people will do like uh, blue for support, red for resistance, um, you know, or, you know, people keep it all the same color. People will change up the colors on, you know, whatever. For me, it just works. I know that if I see price, when I dial into the five minute chart here, if I see price coming up to a purple, purple resistance line, I know that that's my hourly. And then the black lines for me are my, um, are my uh, 15 minute, excuse me. And then if I, excuse me. Oh, sorry, I thought somebody asked something. Um, if I find anything, you know, sort of really, really stand out, like that stands out on the 15 minute as well, like I'll, I'll kind of adjust my trend lines or I'll draw in another trend line. Otherwise, I'll just adjust the one that I have. So like this one, I can see, like I can adjust this one a little bit. Now I made my trend line too big. So that kind of fits, you know, there's our three points of contact. That kind of fits our, you know, our, our three points of contact structure a little bit better, right? So, um actually i'm getting a little a little too goofy with this i don't really like that there anymore um reason being is that this candle completely engulfed that last one so this may come down further than that so i'm going to nullify that it may bounce off it but i i don't like it as a as great of a confirmation anymore uh engulfing means that this whole red candle completely um, you know, it went higher and it went further below the uh, previous bullish candle. If that's what an engulfing is. I'll go into candlestick patterns a little bit too here, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, I can go into some candlestick patterns as well because that is a huge, huge part as to how I trade. But now let's get into the sauce. Let's get into the sauce here. So this is uh, the setup that I use. Primarily, I do use other things too, but this has been the strategy that I've liked um, the absolute most lately. And so, um, this is a really simple strategy. I mean, it is, but it, it is, but the better you know it, or the more you know, then the even you know more powerful it is. So, I use Bollinger Bands. I use the 14 RSI, so just the standard RSI settings, except I changed my upper and lower bands to 60 and 40. So I use RSI a little bit differently, and I actually do want to go in depth on the RSI because I use it a little bit differently than maybe you guys have learned um, so far. But that's my settings for the RSI. And then I use the directional movement index stochastic or the DMI stochastic. Uh, I use that as well, just on, you know, standard settings. Um, and this is kind of very secondary for me. I don't really necessarily marry the uh, DMI as much, but RSI is the truth. So this is why a lot of times you guys will hear me and see me, you know, disregard uh, currency strength meters and talk a lot of trash about currency strength meters because the RSI is literally, it, that stands for the relative strength index so it's literally telling you how strong the currency pair is now a lot of you know and i'm not completely saying that you know to disregard currency strength meters they can be helpful but me personally i've just found that whenever i marry a currency strength it always tends to turn on me so i just don't have very good um, luck with it i know it's lights out for other traders so find out if it works for you or not 
but for me, this is the strength meter that I need. Um, the RSI and a lot of people will think, you know, if it's coming up really high here that, you know, it's, it's overbought or that it, it needs to, um, slow down or that, it, that it's really strong, right? You think that it's really strong. Well, yes and no. And then, you know, when, again, like when it's below, like when it's really, really down low, everyone thinks it's really weak. It's not necessarily weak. It just has strong downwards momentum. So it's not a matter of, uh, you know, strong and weak. It's just which direction is it strong in. Now, for me, I like to use the uh, RSI as a tool to help me see where um, do I think price is going, or where do I think, yeah, price is going to keep going. So when I have it in between 60 and 40 here, that's kind of my indication that, you know, we're in a good, we're in a good standing with, um, you know, with the market. It's not trending super, super hard one way or the other. So like if it's up here, then that's telling me we've got a lot of strong upwards momentum. So um, I'm actually not looking for sells when, when it's outside this purple area. I'm not looking for sells because I'm, I'm thinking, you know, this has got a lot of, a lot of oomph going to the top side, right? And so same thing when it's down below here, that's not necessarily meaning it's weak or anything like that. Like it is oversold, but it's not saying that um, it can't go down or it, that it has to come up. It could keep going down further and further and further because we trade on such small time frames. You know, you have to remember that like these, these high time frames, they need, you know, they need to make their moves too. So, you know, all the smaller time frames we're taking advantage of, you know, very minuscule moves inside the grand plan of the, uh, of what the market has going on. Right. So I look for my setups. I know if it's in the purple here, then, and it comes up and it's touching one of these Bollinger bands, then this is a great opportunity for me to sell because it's telling me it's not trending super hard to the upside we're in a little uptrend here but it's telling me it's not trending very hard in the upside so we can take advantage of sells here right now then the, and then you know support resistance um stuff like that definitely plays a factor in this as well so uh, like if i see like you know that's why i had that support drawn or that resistance drawn here is it could do exactly what it did is it bounced right off of it so I'm like, all right, if it's broken through a support or if I, excuse me, if it's broken through a resistance, it could retest it as a support and keep going. Right. So um, I'm sorry if this is going a little fast. If I am going a little fast and go ahead and unmute yourself and let me know. Um, but this is just kind of things that like I'm looking for in the market. I'm trying to find everything here in real time uh, so that we can kind of take advantage and possibly even take trades if we, if we wanted to, but I'll look and see what all, what is all going on on the 15 minute. And then I'll usually take my trades from the five minute. I'll usually dial down to the five minute and I'll take my trades. And this is actually really, really perfect setup right here. So our directional movement index is not um, completely in agreement with this, but this is uh, something that I did want to teach that um, I'm really happy that this, this uh, happened. So I guess we'll have to wait and see how this candle closes first because it does look like it does have a lot of upwards momentum. But um, another thing I look for on the RSI is something called a divergence. And this is probably the single most like surefire um, indication on a trade setup for me. Um, Let's see if I can actually find one. A better example here. Um, okay, so this is actually a really good example here. I'm actually going to clear out my chart because I do want to go over this here. So price came up and it hit, you know, this area right here 
I'm gonna look in on these two setups right here. So price came up and that is our resistance, right? Actually, you know what I can do? I can do this. Perfect. Now we can actually use this. Okay. So price came up and it hit this and then, and then it sold off, right? The market sold off. So if I play this out, how do I do this? Oh no, I did not want to do that. Sorry, everyone. All right. So market came up to this area here and it sold off. Um, I wanna know how I, okay, that's how I do it, okay. So now market's doing its thing, it's doing its thing. Now, when it came back up here, let's back up here for a sec. How do I back this up now? Okay, I want to go one more forward here. Okay, so when this candle closed, right, what we see here on the RSI, I'm trying to, in the middle of something important here, is look at where the RSI hit when um, price came up here last, right? We're gonna look at this little spot right here. Or actually, I'm gonna draw a vertical line so we can see that this is literally right in the uh, in this spot. This right here is the sauce, you guys. Like this is this is uh, like I said, like one of the most surefire things that has ever happened to my trading game. Um, price came up here. We'll call it 65.24. That's where the RSI hit. Uh, at its highest point right here. So then price came back up and it hit this, you know, this price point again, right? So price came up and it hit this price point. I'm actually not even gonna draw the vertical because we're on it right now. But uh, what we can see is, you know, price is trending upwards, it's coming up and it's retesting a resistance line. Again, the RSI measures the strength of a currency. Um, so it doesn't have a very massive downtrend, but we can see the next time that this candle or this price point was hit, it was hit with less strength. We'll say is that 60, 63.64, right? 63.64 was where the RSI stood the next time it hit that line. Whereas the first time it hit is at 65.24, okay? So we could have even waited this out to get confirmation that this was gonna head down by waiting one more candle. So now we're seeing that it's even lower now, it's moving down. And then we could have still taken this entry, even at the closing of this candle, we still could have taken this entry at 676, and we still would have gotten our move down. Right. So what the what the divergence is telling us is when price or when the market came up to this price, it had this much strength. It had 65.24 um, units of strength. Okay. And then when it came and it tested that same price, it only had 63.24 unit units of price i don't even know i don't know what the what the uh right terminology for that is but what it's telling us is that it came up and even though it hit that same price it hit there with less strength it hit there with at a from a weaker um relative relative amount of strength right so we could have predicted this sell off because if this is going to test this resistance Right, and then it comes in and retests the resistance. Well, it could just smack right through, right? Or it could reject off the resistance again. So 
the way to, you know, the way to find that is through the RSI, through the relative strength index, see, all right, it came up, it had this much strength when I got there, and then it came up again, how much strength did it have the next time that it went and hit it? You know, so that's kind of the, um, sorry here, I'm totally ignoring the chat, sorry. Yeah. How do you determine the weeks? Um, so that's a great question. Um, a, a strong form of resistance would be how hard the market reacted off of it. So, you know, I could draw this in. Uh, I mean, this is, and it also depends on the time frame. So, um, you know, an hourly support is going to be stronger than a 15 minute or a five minute support just because there's more, um, more players in the market trading off the longer time frames than there are off of such little time frames. The, the larger time frames will kind of trump the smaller time frames. So like if, you know, we're getting a buy set up on the five minute, but the 15 minute has other plans and there's a sell set up on the 15 minute, I'd rather look for the sells than I would for the, the buy. I'd probably let the five minute buy play out and then rather take the sell. So, so I trust that the um, analysis on higher time frames. But then also it's like, you know, this resistance, if we were looking at a little bit longer of a time frame, this resistance right here, I'm like, well, shit, like this literally came up here and it just got smacked back down, right? This dropped a lot. And so then when it came back up here, we could have taken this cell right here and we would have cleared that. You know, we took a five minute cell right as it got to the, right as that candle closed or even like a little after, we would have cleared that because these are five minute candles. Now, once, this is another thing is, um, you know, you heard uh, Taylor talk about it on our session the other day. It's not necessarily like something where you just want to rip out, um, trades off of one setup or too many trades off one setup because the market's got to make its move and if it doesn't make your move like it could be turning on you so you know i like to say like you know when we're in a trade what the market does after we clear is none of our business our business is right here during these two candlesticks or within these within one of these two candlesticks if we're going to take a five minute trade we're going to be out of the market, we take it right here, we're gonna be out of the market way before this comes back up here, right? We're gonna be out of the market long, long before that. So what the market does after you clear your trade is none of your business. Just, just let it, you know, let it play and let it do its thing and look, you know, completely reset and reanalyze. So you don't want to, you know, get married to a setup necessarily and keep trying to fight one setup and trade one setup and trade off one setup because, you know, if it makes your move and your move could be, you know, six pipettes and your move could be 600 pipettes. I mean, I mean, that's a lot, but you know what I mean? I, like, it doesn't matter if uh, you clear by an inch or a mile, if you clear in binary, you clear a trade, right? So you want to really, you know, make sure that you're, uh, not getting too attached to one setup and going so gung ho. And that also goes back to kind of, you know, managing your emotions with things. If you're like, you know, fighting it and you bring ego to the table and you're like, Oh, I know it's going to do this. Like, I, I just know it, you know, then that's kind of, you know, when the market tends to slap you in the face and tell you who's in charge, right? If you if you disrespect the uh, market, it's going to disrespect your broker account. Um, so that's hopefully answers that to make a short story long, uh, the more times it hits that spot and doesn't break through, the stronger that support resistance is. Um, yes and no. So, I mean, there's definitely like, I feel like there's mixed, mixed uh, um, feelings on that. So if it hits multiple times in the kind of like a short span, that's kind of, for me, like that's kind of telling me that the market is trying to break through it. That doesn't mean it will, but it's at least telling me like, Hey, the market wants to go up, you know? 
Um, I mean, I'd, I'd like to see other confirmations to tell me that the market's turning than to just simply re rely on it never breaking through that, if that makes sense. So something like the divergence, you know, how much strength did it have when it retested it again and again and again, right? Um, that's just kind of how I, I view it again. Like, I, I mean, it might not, it might not look like it all the time, but I do take a pretty, pretty cautious approach to the market and pretty cautious approach when it comes to trading support and resistances. Um, simply because, you know, the market's going to do what it wants. And I like to trade a, a lot of exotic shit. So, um, tends to move weird, you know? <laughs> Um, but I, I would think like, you know, in a longer span of time. So like, if we were to zone out here, you know, to kind of counteract that, like, so, and that's, in, that's all in short time frames. but in a longer span of time, if we were to see, um, price reject multiple times in multiple different spots off of one area, then I would take that as a, a really strong support or resistance. So something like, um, uh, hmm. this is kind of one right here. This whole like little zone is actually but something like right around this area, you see it came up and it rejected here. And then later on, like this is, you know, at 10, 15 on the 20th or on the 5th, I mean, you know, and then we come over here, this is the next day at two on the 6th, you know, came up, it did break a little bit short term, short term, but came up here rejected this is on the six again 10 15 rejected here this is on the six again at 1945 this one's on the seventh so it's like this is telling me this is a good this is a good resistance you know it broke it very temporarily and i kind of go into that um in one of the first videos i made i kind of go into something like that so um this is actually a really good example of it so if you look at things on a big time scale here, so let's take this whole area. So this whole area is consolidation, right? Well, that's kind of where the, that mean, what that means is, you know, what con consolidation is, is where the bulls and the bears are fighting for the market. Who's gonna take over the market? So um, we had a big sell off, Kind of consolidated here as well and then kind of came down a little bit and then bulls took over bulls were like you know what we're gonna take take over the market here and then this is the point that it got to where the bears were actually kind of like you know what no like stop this is where you know the market was attractive for sellers to enter the market so now we've got a lot of sellers entering the market but we have a lot of people trying to ride on this bull run so we've got you know buyers and sellers both in the market now what the banks do, this is smart money concepts, is the banks are gonna look at the market and say, okay, where can we make the most money? And what they're gonna do is they're gonna say, okay, the, to make the most money, we need to push the market, in this case, down. So what they're gonna do is traditional Forex traders, they have you know, a stop loss, if, any, if everyone's familiar with what a stop loss is, um traditional forex traders they'll set a stop loss which mean, basically means uh that they'll be taken out of the market at a certain price above or below their entry depending on which way they want the market to go so if sellers have their trades in if they have their trades in for sales and the market's kind of consolidating these sellers are waiting for the market to make its move a lot of times what sellers will do is they'll put their stop loss right above, you know, where the resistance is, or like they'll put it like right at like this resistance, we'll say. Well, just, just because like this example, it did have a little bit of a uh, spot where it popped out. 
So let's say sellers put their stop loss right here to protect their account. Um, then, and they're waiting for the market to go down. So basically what the banks will do is, is they'll say, all right, we're ready to push the market down. So they'll wait for it to come up here. You see it kind of rejected right there a little bit. And then the banks were like, actually, we're going to take out all the sellers. So they push the market up just a little bit so that it hits all these sellers stop losses and it takes them out of the market. And then it lets the market, then they flood the market and they allow it to move to the downside. So instead of um, sellers collecting on this big sell move here, they got stopped out. So that's kind of something that I go over in um, like one of the first videos I've made, but the market is always, always being fought over between bulls and bears or buyers and sellers. And so that's kind of uh, um, something you can look for as well. But that's why like I kind of use that area and I didn't really, I didn't really, uh, you know, take into account too much that there was a little, a little breakthrough on that. Um, because, you know, that obviously was a strong, strong resistance because it did absolutely tank down to the bottom side, right? Um, I think the one thing I haven't gone over would be the DMI stochastic. That's just kind of your short term. When it spits out the, uh, that one I use kind of similarly to how all of us uh, have been taught how to use the RSI and how we use the stochastic is, you know, when it crosses up, it's giving us the buy signal. When it crosses down, it's giving us the sell signal. It's telling us where the market is ready to move to, right? So, um, Let's go back into real time and I'll see if I can, I'll see if I can walk us through um, an actual trade setup here. Does anybody have any questions? Like I said, I do want to leave this. I, I think I left it unlocked for everyone to be able to unmute their mic. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to um, unmute yourself. If I don't know you, introduce yourself. I like meeting new people. Um, and ask away. Uh, typically, what kind? Uh, it's Chewy. Uh, what type type of market do you like trading? Do you like trading uh, consolidation, or do you like trading uptrends or downtrends? Um, it's a great question. I'd say right. I'd say with this strategy, I definitely like trading kind of consolidation a little bit more. Um, not necessarily consolidation like such itty bitty movements, but consolidation on kind of like a higher time frame. Um, I would say is kind of my, my favorite. Um, it's just, yeah, I mean, it's important to be aware of it. Like it's, it's something that you, you definitely want to keep in mind if you're trading in a trending market or if you're trading in a consolidated market, you do trade them differently. So if it's trending upwards, you know, I don't want to necessarily take sales. I'd rather wait for a pullback and then, you know, even if it does come down where I think I could sell it, I'd rather wait for the pullback and then buy it and take it on the continuation upwards because that's where I know the bigger move is going to happen. Um, and then I'm not going to get kind of screwed out of uh, a little sell because, you know, let's say, you know, you're waiting for it to go down. You take a sell in an uptrending market and you're waiting for it to make a move down. You're waiting for it to go down. Well, if, you know, you end up having to, let's say you end up having to like roll it over. Now you're kind of in the market for a lot longer. And then um, let's say it does make like a little bit of a move down, but it doesn't quite go down nearly as far as you thought it would. But let's say it may, you know, makes a little move down and then just flies back upwards. Well, you know, you could try to keep fighting it and roll it over again. But um, a lot of times it's probably just best to, to let that go if you're trading against the trend. 
Um, but consolidation, I do like with this with this strategy. I definitely do do like trading it in consolidation, just because I'm able to play it off of the Bollinger Bands really nicely. And if it's staying in that purple zone and the RSI, then that's kind of uh, most of like what I look for. So if it comes up, and I mean this would have obviously been a sell that plays out, but um, and you know we probably could have actually taken this seeing this little resist or uh, support right here but um if this comes up and it touches the bollinger band and it's inside that purple zone then you know that's that's my indication for the sell i mean obviously here it was outside of it but that's my indication for the sell because you know when when it's consolidating the bollinger bands are really nice because we know that um price has to come back to them price price has to come back and uh stay you know within the bollinger bands 90 percent of the time so in a consolidated market it's like all right if it's up by the red band and we're not in an uptrend necessarily then you know that's a good good indication that this is going to make a much better move to the south than um if we were trying to fight it on an uptrend you know Uh, the one minute rollovers. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the one minute rollovers. Yeah, I've had issues with it. Um, I think everybody's had issues with it at this point. But I think uh, one of the most important things around trading, because I did, I definitely did. Like the first time it happened to me, like I'll, I'm fully willing to admit, I got frustrated. I let it get to me, and I knew I shouldn't have, and I knew that I was doing it like I knew what I was doing but um the thing with the one minute rollovers is don't let it don't let it get to you I mean we we're all traders we're all good traders we can we can adapt to it and so instead of dwelling on like why it's happening or when it you know when it's happening like you know just know that like all right if this is happening like I gotta I gotta switch it up I gotta I gotta switch up like what my game plan is here um so just not not oh I'm sorry Lila not feeding into it and just kind of, um, you know, moving forward with it. Cause there's nothing we can do about it. The brokers are doing it because they, you know, think we're trading fraudulently, which I, or they thought that's what they told me at least like, that's absolutely hilarious to me. Um, I, I'd rather, uh, you know, be, I'd, I'd rather be winning so many trades that they think we're trading fraudulently than to, think that we're just another trader not and not be winning trades um, so in a way it's kind of a compliment hey kyle gary here uh just quick question man i know you said before with like trading uh sorry uh tracing your um points of uh, sports and resistance with bodies or wigs how do you like how did you determine if you liked more bodies or wigs like is it because it's like respects more or better entry point or like why? Um, so for me, I do pay attention to the wicks. I don't completely disregard the wicks. Um, you know, like, I mean, like these wicks here, they show strong, you know, the wicks tell a story. So it's like, you know, it came up to this price and it strongly rejected. Right. So then when it came up here, we may have had to roll that once, but when it came up here, we could have, we could have capitalized on that little move, right? We could have sold that there. Now, the reason I like the bodies is because that also tells a story. So um, let's see here. Let's see if I can bring up like a pretty decent example. Um Okay, so I'll just use this little example right here. So if I'm trying to determine in this little consolidation, so there's, you know, as you, the more time you spend on charts, the more you can kind of like gauge some of this stuff. But uh, this is consolidation to me. You know, it's bouncing between this price. I mean, it hit 
it hit this 924 area you know, three or four times in this span and then it kind of just kept bouncing off of this 037 area right so um a good you know something that i like to look at is where the candlesticks close so for me you know i probably to be real um may have gotten in on a sell on this candle because this closes way up here at 034 but this one closed at 016 so that's telling me you know that it's not breaking through this resistance right and so then when this one came up you know we got back in here i would have probably taken i would have definitely taken this trade because it came up there's not an insane wick you know with with an insane wick like that strong rejection but that doesn't mean it's not going to come right back up and try to test it again but this one we don't have as wild of a wick i definitely would have taken this trade um and also just because of, just just looking at the closing of the candle the closing of the candle was lower than that close so it's telling me that tells me it's respecting the resistance um another thing as well boom price i gotta move our chat here really just quick sorry price you know when it first came up to this resistance the uh rsi hit 69.63 the next time it came up and tested this where is it at it was at 59 ish it was at 60 ish so we got it coming up and it's testing you know the same resistance but we've got a downtrend on the rsi so we know that the market's going to follow suit right this is a really great example of divergence that actually makes a lot of sense man <laughs> i had no idea i could use the rsi like that appreciate that yeah it's money i know i use different settings than um probably any of the hfx educators actually now that i think about it any of them that i've seen at least i know matt uses it a little differently he likes to dial it down to uh the four four rsi i think nest is the same thing and like they like those uh 75 and 25 settings but um the rsi like what this number means just so that everybody knows like what this number means the length of it is the amount of candlesticks taken into consideration. So uh, this is taking the um, this is taking the last 14 candlesticks into consideration when it gives us our strength index. So it's giving us a little bit longer of a of a run back than you know the the uh, four RSI. The four RSI is only going to use the previous four candles. That's why. Um, a lot of people use the four RSIs because it's, you know, what we're doing is hyper scalping the market. I mean, I mean, you don't you don't see um, in any type of other style of trading, you don't see, you know, people making money as quickly as we're able to. Uh, it should show up in trading view. 90 zero. I've got mine at 60 40. This is <laughs> uh, it's the DMI stochastic extreme. That's what that's what it is called. Hi, Kyle. My name is Joan. Um, I'm just curious. I know you said that like when you first start you really start mark up from like week to five minute um how do you like keep track of all of you know all of the lines that you end up getting doing those um a really great way to do that that's a great question um uh thank you for asking that because i can definitely go into a little bit better detail i didn't necessarily do this when i first started but uh or when i was when i was going through all of that 
But a nice thing that you can do is, so let's say I draw this trend line here um, on EuroCAD. I can draw this trend line and then let's draw in, um, let's draw in like a couple support and resistances here. So I'll draw like a resistance there. I can draw like a, um, a support right there. Okay, so what I can do is you can actually click on these or double click on these and you can go over to text and you can actually put in text. So you can say like, uh, you know, weekly, uh, And you can, you know, decide where you want it. So if I want it on the bottom, all the way to the right, you know, then it's gonna show up right there. So then I can go here, I can say uh, weekly resistance. Is that how you spell resistance? So I can label, I can, I can sit and I can label all these. So then when I go into the one hour, um, I can do this, this. One hour. Uh, top, all the way to the right, boom. So then I can go into my 15 minute and can say, oh, okay, this is my one hour resistance, right? So that's something uh, that I literally like just found out about in like the last six months or so that, that you could do that. <laughs> I've been trading for a few years now, but you can, you can double click and you can label it all. Another thing you can do is you can color code them. So you can do all of your resistances and all your supports on the weekly, like red, and then on the daily, all of them, all of them can be blue. Um, you know, and all of the four hours can be orange. You know, you can you can color code all of it as well. But find something that works for you. There is no like, you know, there is no like right or wrong way to uh, to do this. Like. And that's like, a, you know, a lot of, a lot of people want to know, you know, the best, uh, what's the best strategy. And we all know cash trap is king, but what strategy works best for you? You know, cause you can see something that works really, really well for you that might not work really, really well for somebody else. Or, you know, I know like, uh, Cole, he likes to have his background. Oops. He likes to have his background dark. He likes to have it, you know, on the dark background. Some people like to have the grids. I like to have my my background blank, you know, like the little the little price grids. I like to have mine blank. It's all, you know, kind of just uh, what what do you like to see? Like, what do you like seeing most? See, like the little grids. But um, now I don't remember which which uh, setup I have, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'd say all strategies work, but don't at the same time. <laughs> all strategies do work, all strategies work. It's just, it's just, what do you, what do you enjoy? Like this should be something that you, you know, enjoy doing, I would hope. But it's like, what do you like? Like, what do you see best? What do you, what do you, um, like looking for in the market you know some people like to uh some people like to you know trade off the rsi like me and some people like to trade off of um you know all sorts of crazy stuff some people strictly trade off of support resistance and trend lines and it works for them so there is no, you know, wrong way. I know a lot of people who are, who are naked traders that only trade off of um, support resistance and trend lines. I know some people who like to use, you know, like a moving average or two. Um, you know, it's all about kind of what, what works best for you. I've got all sorts of stuff saved in here. Some people, um, 
actually, if you still on the call, and Nick, I know Nick loves using Web Slinger. He freaking loves this. Look at how wild this looks. Like for me, that's just got a lot going on. But he he eats off of it. He loves it. So everything works. It's just what do you like to look at? What do you like to see? And what works for you? Um, but yeah, I mean, find you know, add your own flair to it. Make you know, make it personalized. Make it yourself. Don't don't feel like you have to be so. Uh, such like a mirror image to somebody else. I mean, if you notice, like, you know, myself, Matt, uh, Marks, Jake, we all trade so differently. We all trade entirely differently than one another. Because we've all just kind of dabbled and all of our charts look different even. We just, we like to look at the things, you know, different ways, but it works for us. It works for each of us, so. <laughs> Uh, I hope that kind of helps answer some some stuff. I'm not gonna, wait. I'm not gonna keep sitting here waiting for Eurocad to set up for us here. We're gonna find something. Um, I think Euro actually had a red folder today, so. Maybe stay away from that. See, here we go. Got some nice consolidation going. We're inside the 40 and 60 on the RSI. So if this comes down here, tests around this Bollinger Band. In fact, if it tests around like this little support area that is created, I'd like that for the buy. We could also dial in. Let's go check and see what's currency strength meter is doing. Um, oh, a lot of people got a lot of going on. Um, by the way, it is nine o'clock. So uh, all for profit is going live in a minute or so, if they're not already. Okay, so AUD is a little bit stronger than GBP, but I'm really not, um, you know, like I said, not super married to those. But uh, I mean, if it was like dramatically, if it was like dramatically um, stronger, then I would probably stay away. But let's see here, where's IQ sent? Oh. I feel like the market's been super spiky lately. Last few days. Yeah, this seems to be moving fine. I like to take five minute trades. We can go in. And yeah. So. We have some wicks here, um, got a little bit of a push here, but kind of around 96-ish. Um, I'd probably be, be okay with taking a buy on GBP AUD. kind of based on what we're seeing. We've got some upwards momentum here. It's coming up. The only thing to keep an eye on though also, we got our downtrend. So let me draw these in here for you. So this is something uh, I know Cole loves to do. So on this downtrend, when it comes up and breaks, he loves to wait for it to test the backside of his downtrend line and continue the upside. He loves doing that. Loves it, loves it, loves it. So 
I'm going to take a buy right there. Let's see how this goes. Let's add that support. Could have definitely been our pickier support. We will see how this rocks. Got a cross up on the DMI a little bit ago. Does look like it's starting to kind of break to the downside a little more. Maybe underestimated AUD strength a little bit, but. We'll see how that plays out. Consolidation, which is wonderful. So something, you know, back to uh, Gary, your question about like the wicks and the bodies of the candles were to draw support and resistances. So something that I also would look for is if we're in this trade and I'm debating on, you know, if this, if this is gonna move up or down or keep going one way, something I would do is I'd pay attention to where this candlestick closes. So if this candlestick closes below the close of this candlestick, I'm probably going to let it go. Or I'm probably like preparing myself to let it go. Um, just cause that's telling me like, you know, price has broken that support. That's kind of what that says to me is that it breaks that support, you know, so that's why I pay attention a lot to where the opening and closing of candlesticks are. But we are in profits, not by a ton, but we are in profits. See how this next candle goes. So it did close above our support there. Kind of in the wiki little support there that we played it off of. But had we been picky and gotten it in those 80s where the bottom of this candlestick is, I mean, we'd be sitting, we'd be sitting pretty well. We could have gotten away with a three minute. Probably could have gotten away with a three minute. Does anybody have any other questions at all? I'm asking a lot of markup questions, but um, I've seen like the, I think it was, it's like the flag Oh, like when you draw the parallel trend lines, how do those work? Flag. Um, oh, I get what you're saying. Um, those are, um, hmm. I don't see them on smaller time frames as much. Um, I do see them on larger time frames a little bit more, but basically what the flag is, is the correction. So, you know, how the market moves in waves, the flag is kind of that, that correction. So it's not, uh, like the market doesn't always, you know, move. Let me see if I can find like a drawing tool. Uh, uh what this one? Nope, it's not Come 
Come on, fam. This is a If anybody knows, help a brother out. I know that there's a tool that you can use to freaking draw. I guess I can just use the uh, paintbrush. Yeah. So a lot of times we think like, you know, the market moves in waves, right? And it does. But there's always those little moves within the moves. So it's like, you know, you're, it could be a big move up on a longer time frame. And then the small time frames is kind of making this little up and down, up and down before it keeps moving up. But on a larger time frame, it probably just looks like this. But when you dial it down to, you know, somewhat smaller time frames, it just looks like this. So the flag would be, um, you know, like right, right here is your pole. And then right here, you've got your flag. And this is your correction. They call this a bullish flag. So if you draw this, or if you, you know, do the parallel lines like you were talking about, pole and then the flag. And then that's what the, what it is is a correction. Um, I'm not super super um, well versed in it. I don't really trade them. I don't really look for them. If I'm being honest, but um, I mean, what it is is a correction move. And then it's you know most of the time like you know what's going up and then it comes down a little bit slightly on the flag. That's a bullish flag. So you're kind of waiting for that breakout to the upside. How you determine when and where it's going to break out to the upside, I don't know, to be honest. Is it the parallel channel in the drawing tool? Um, oh, I was just looking for a tool to be like, to figure out how to draw all this out. But, uh, yeah, I did just see that actually when we, when I was looking for it, I saw that there was a an actual parallel drawing tool. Where is that? Goodness. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty dope actually. Yeah, you can kind of use that as your little your little channel. I didn't even know they had that. That's awesome. Um, I feel like Euro. This is GA. That's probably why. I feel like Eurocat doesn't really make flags. That's probably why I don't really look for them. I could be wrong on this, but this could be this could kind of be a flag mm -hmm. maybe we're stretching it a little bit up move correction up move could be wrong but I, that's kind of like in general the idea of kind of what you're looking for on the flag patterns Um, there is a guy that I used to work with a lot that really, really liked, uh, trading flag patterns, but he's no longer, no longer trades with the company anymore. He trades with us anymore at least, but did anybody take that GA trade and clear that with me? Nice. Let's go. Did continue moving down after that. That's why after we win our trade, 
It's none of our business what the market does, right? However, now we're kind of kind of getting into a little little area that's kind of appealing. We've got this little support right here. Hitting that Bollinger Band, we're inside the purple. Got a good looking move on the DMI. Tempting, just saying. Um, rather trade Eurocad. I really like trading Eurocad, but there's nothing wrong with GA. GA is definitely the second, my second most favorite pair. Nothing wrong with GA. So if I had to guess what this is going to do, I'd say we're gonna come down and test this support. We'll get a retracement back to the old support. And then a continuation down on this larger trend line. That would be my guess of what we are doing, looking at. can see it's tempting to just take it right there right um yeah that's kind of all i really have for all of us here I don't know if anyone wants to go over anything else or has any other questions at all. I can certainly go over that. Awesome, awesome. Good, well, I hope everyone uh, learned a little something something. Zach, thanks again for putting this together, brother. Um, and yeah, I mean, hope you all have a rest, good rest of your night. I will uh, hop off here so that uh, y'all can tune in with A for P. I'm sure that they're slaughtering the market right now. So, um, you know, I will uh, end the call here. I'll stop recording. Appreciate it, Cop. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely.